Hey, Concrete fans, I was asked to speak at the Oklahoma State Science and Engineering Fair this year. It's a huge honor for me. This organization had a massive influence on me, kind of helped me figure out that I, I love science. And I realized I've been doing science fair projects ever since I was like in first grade until now. So I'm a concrete researcher, right? Anyway, I made this video. I hope you'll like it. I talked to them about why concrete is the secret weapon. I talked to them about how they can use their skills to solve big challenges, things that can drive them. And um, I don't know, I kind of got uh, fired up for this one. I hope you'll like it. If you do, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and of course, leave me a comment below. Take care, everybody. See you soon. My name's Tyler Lay. I'm from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and I am crazy excited to be here today because I spent my entire elementary and high school career competing in the Oklahoma State Science and Engineering Fair. I would make those cardboard boards. I would stay up all night with my experiments. I would work crazy hard on them, go to sleep in agony, and then wake up with that blissful feeling and do it all again the next day. It was torture. It was amazing. And I loved every single minute of it. Now I'm still in a way doing science fair experiments every day because I'm a professor at Oklahoma State University in the civil and environmental engineering department. Let me tell you a little bit about why I do what I do. I believe concrete is the greatest material on the planet. Concrete. You know, the gray, hard stuff on your sidewalk that you cannot live without. I dare you to try. I want to make concrete more durable, economical, constructible, and sustainable. I help build people and tools to improve the world of concrete. Here's a number of the tools that I've helped work on, and I'm gonna tell you about some of them today. And here is a YouTube channel that I have that of course is all about concrete. Please, please, please check it out at youtube.com forward slash Tyler Lay. I love concrete. Like I'm a maniac, all right? I've got like my own concrete clothing line. I'm like a freak. For reals though, concrete is the second most used commodity in the world. You know what number one is? It's water, and that's only because water is inside of concrete. Concrete costs five cents per pound. What else can you think of that lasts generations that's so useful that costs five cents a pound? It's unbelievable. There's six and a half billion cubic meters of concrete placed every year. That's a cubic meter for every human on the earth every single year. And because of all that concrete, it's gonna make a pretty big carbon footprint. 5% of the world's CO2 is from producing concrete. If you make six and a half billion cubic meters of anything, it's gonna have a pretty big carbon footprint. We're just actually pretty cool that we're not even larger, but we're working hard, hard, hard to make that carbon footprint smaller every single year. Concrete's amazing because it can made it of local materials be formed in any shape. You can use recycled stuff in it. It's strong, it's beautiful, it's amazing. You don't believe me? It's Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright, named one of the greatest architectural achievement ever. This is a home with a stream that goes right through it. See the waterfall right there? Yeah, that's from the water going through the homes. It wouldn't be possible if the whole thing wasn't made out of concrete with these gargantuan, beautiful concrete cantilever beams. This is the Saganatobo Bridge by Robert Maillard in the Swiss Alps. Unbelievable. 80 years old, made out of reinforced concrete. Here's the Plaza Tello Dello Sport um, by Nervi in Rome. Look at the lines, look at the shape, look at the beauty made out of concrete. Here's the Sydney Opera House, iconic structure. Look at those roofs made from pre-stressed concrete. Um, this is the Hoover Dam and Bypass. Um, concrete dams are some of the ones that carry the largest loads of any structure designed by humans. Pretty amazing. The Burj Khalifa, tallest building in the world, structural system, concrete. Garden gnome, concrete. 
R2D2, that's what we make at Oklahoma State University, concrete. Concrete, concrete, concrete. It's everywhere, right? How could you live without it? What's my goal in life? Well, I want to take down a grand challenge. What? What's a grand challenge? Well, you know, it's a big thing that plagues humanity. It's like Voldemort or Thanos or like Darth Vader, but it's like real. Like our infrastructure is totally falling apart. It gets horrible, horrible grades. People think we need to be spending more than $170 billion a year to fix it. We're spending less than half that. This is a grand challenge. This is a Voldemort. We need to put this away. And I think the secret weapon, of course, is concrete. Rock, sand, cement, water, the greatest material on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Can we use any concrete? Can we just use that concrete we make in our backyard with a wheelbarrow and all that water? As our friend Megan Trainer says, I to the night to the no, no, no. We need concrete that's constructible, that's economical, that's durable, that's sustainable. And how are we going to get that? Science fair experiments. Yeah, science fair experiments. But I have a bigger science budget these days. I've got things like x-ray CT scanners. They help us see inside of materials. This is a concrete sample here, and we're taking x-ray images of it, and we can get 3D maps. This is a real map of the inside of the concrete. We didn't have to cut anything. We can look inside and see what it looks like. These are the aggregate and the air bubbles. We've made the paste, the cement, and the water transparent. So I can see how the rocks pack together. The big rocks, the intermediate rocks, the little sand particles, and gain some super big insights on the best way to pack them and see how that really impacts things like how you finish the concrete. Looks like a science fair experiment, doesn't it? Looks like this, a big concrete pump that we have in our lab with a pipe network. We can pump it around, around, and around and measure the pressures as we're pumping. Big science fair project, ladies and gentlemen. It's totally amazing. Do things like make concrete in the field and find out how to get the rocks to pack right. So when it comes out the other side of this big machine, it's a road, it's smooth, and it doesn't need any forms. And if you understand the packing, you can make that happen. And as any science fair, good science fair student knows, you have to make your findings easy for people to understand. And we did it like this. One piece of paper, one graph, summarizing more than a million dollars in research. This is called the tarantula curve. It's used around the world, developed here in the state of Oklahoma at Oklahoma State University by understanding how we pack our aggregates together. This on the x-axis is the sieve, is the different sizes of aggregates, and on the y-axis is the amount. And I named it the tarantula curve. Why? Because I think it looks like a tarantula. And when you develop something, you can name it whatever you want. So it's the tarantula curve. The next question I start to ask is, what is concrete's biggest weakness? I mean, seriously, What's its biggest weakness? Well, if I had a concrete block and I pulled on it like this, it would be much, much easier to crack it. It's very weak in tension. Actually, one-tenth the strength in tension as it is in compression. So I said, oh, no, these horrible cracks. They make me want to cry. Ah, that's a grand challenge. I want to go after it. I want to take care of them. So we're going to talk about two technologies today to go after these. One is using plastic fibers. Yeah, recycled plastic fibers inside concrete. And the other one is using some fancy chemicals. We're just going to call them SRAs or shrinkage reducing admixtures for short that change the surface tension. And I, these bad boys are baby aspirin. Whatever baby aspirin, what? These are methods that are effective, that are simple, that are painless, that are low cost and have minimal side effects. Baby aspirin. And that is what we need in society, and that is what concrete needs as well. So what I'm talking about is if I have a concrete slab like this, oh, the sun is beating down on it, the wind is blowing on it, and it's going to cause these cracks. Ugh. I said, could we simulate this? Science fair project. How can we test it? We took some sheet pans, eight 
13 by 18 by one inch and we duct taped rebar in them. Why? Because we want to cause stress razors or places where the cracks would form, little weak spots inside the concrete. Then we set up this science fair experiment thing here where we have two box fans over here. We have a heat lamp over here, a GoPro camera, a clock, and a scale so we can measure the weight change over time. We use thermal cameras to actually map where the temperatures were. Yeah, my budget's a little bit bigger, but it's still a science fair project. And we get stuff like this. We use our GoPro camera and we can track how the weight changes, how the time changes, and oh no, the cracks! And we can figure out how to stop them. Now I'm showing you one finding. I've got two mixtures here, one on the left, one on the right. They're exactly the same except for the one on the right has one extra ingredient. What's the difference? I've highlighted the red cracks on the left that were forced to occur by the sun lamp and the box fan temperatures, right? And we're able to make these bad boys go away by using these fibers, 0.025%. 0.0, that's like nothing. That's like our friend Salt Bay here. Yes. Just treating the surface of the concrete, mixing these bad boys in. If Salt Bay, instead of using salt, was using these fibers, that's about how much we would need, about one pound per cubic yard. That's like nothing putting this stuff in. See these little, little bad boys? During the mixing, they break up and these, these fibers go everywhere and they help reinforce that concrete. They're definitely a baby aspirin. Now, if I have this other material, this chemical, this shrink-reducing add mixture, what it does is it changes the surface tension of the water so that it shrinks less. When you lose the water out of the pores, it creates less forces on those pores. And I'm gonna, I've actually embedded strain gauges in the concrete and we can measure how this chemical affects it. On the x-axis here is time and this is drying where it is at 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 50% relative humidity, so in a drying environment. And the green line here has none of the chemical in it. It shrank a lot. Um, the 1% it shrank a little bit less, 2% it shrank less, 4% it shrank even less. And you might say, man, give me the 4%. I don't want it to shrink very much at all. But there's an issue with that. Notice that 1%, we still get a 28% reduction in our shrinkage. If we look at something like strength, so I'm showing strength of the concrete on the y-axis, and I'm showing age on the x-axis. We can look the no SRA there in green, and the 1%, they're on top of one another. There's not much difference. But 2% and 4%, we're losing strength. And that, that's a side effect. That's a problem. But 1%, no strength loss, that's baby aspirin, right? Baby aspirin, that's what we want. This is awesome. So you might not be into concrete. You might be into something else. And how are you gonna solve these grand challenges as you go out there? Well, you're gonna have all kinds of amazing tools at your disposal. And I'll tell you, the number one most important tool though is you. I mean that, you. I teach people like you. I've seen people like you. I've seen what you're capable of. I see what you're going to do. I'm excited about our future with you at the helm. Why you? You don't understand the old ways. You have an open mind. You are innovating machines. We need you. Now you might say, okay, okay, okay. But how do I choose my career? Oh no, what if I choose wrong? Am I gonna be good at it? Do I have what it takes? What do I do? You're at the start of the hero's journey, my friend. And this is you looking out over the journey ahead of you. And back there is the goal. And we need to get really, really fired up about that goal. I mean, seriously, for reals. But you don't have to slay dragons. No, no. You got to find something you want. You really, really, really want. You need to find a big goal, something that's going to get you fired up. And the more you want that goal, the stronger you're going to be pulled through the mud, through the challenges, through the tough parts that's going to be coming up because there will be tough parts. So how in the world are you going to do this? Well, don't focus on every little step. Do not. Do not. Focus on where you want to end up. Think about what it's going to feel like. Feel that moment. Pre-fill it and then start moving. Think about where you want to go and start moving there. Elon Musk says when something is important enough, 
You do it even if the odds are not in your favor. And thank you, Elon, for never thinking about the odds and always moving towards the big goal. But be careful. Be careful in life because life is not about the goal. At least as far as I'm concerned, it's not. Life is about the growth and the fulfillment that comes from your journeys because you're going to have many of them, a whole bunch of them. And I'm excited to hear about them. I can't wait to hear about them. You're going to be like Link, going from baby Link to big Link to thinking about all the journeys you've had in the past. It's going to be like the original Zelda. Then you get to the more advanced ones. I mean, that's why Link, he, the dude's just going all over the place and he's having a great time because he's out there on journeys and he's out there trying to help other people make their lives better. And Zig Ziglar said, you're going to get everything you want in life by helping others get what they want. So in summary, you be you, you find your goal. And I know you have what it takes to make that goal and go even further. And as you're journeying, as you're going, you find out you don't like the goal you're working on. Great. Pick another one because every step is another step to where you're meant to end up. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me today and thank you for being you and for being different and being part of the science fair at Oklahoma State University. You can reach me and find out me more about me at my Instagram page and my Facebook page at concrete.tyler and don't, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Tyler. Take care, everybody. Peace.